first thing to do to boot up is just configure your controller really quickly. It should prompt you and just whatever controls you want for your specific controller, set those up. Hotkey, I go with select. That's totally up to you. So this is the Atom Bomb. It's supposed to be a 32 gigabyte image, although it doesn't really fit on most 32s, I've noticed. You either need a really high quality 32 or a 64, but I think initially he meant for this to be a 64 gigabyte image, so it's pretty much set up for that, and the 64 is gonna give you a lot more space as well. You could also put this on a 128 and put a lot more games and things on it as well. Now this is just a shell. There's just about one game per system, and I think that's just to show you how it works and that the video snaps are there and the artwork is there. So this is a good base image um, in that it's pre-overclocked, so it is running 1.3 gigahertz. The other cores and the frequencies of the RAM and everything's at 500, which is pretty standard. So it's a pretty standard overclock that I've run before, and it'll run smoothly. You shouldn't have to worry about overheating. But again, each pie is different. But 1300, I've done it on many different pies. Not an issue. So this is the Atom Bomb by Duncan's Arcades. And uh, what do we got here? So version 4, by the way, there is a version 5 out now, but version 4 is still a great one as well. As you can see, there's some collections on here like last played games, favorites, and all games. And you can change all that in the RetroPie options, you know, game collection settings. You can go ahead and change the ones you want. Um, and then as you add more games, you can add more things. It does come with Pixel and Kodi pre-installed. And then there's a couple main, different MAME systems here. You got Galaxian, and you have Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom FBA, and then Neo Geo, I think you just got a couple games. And this is running Hursty Blue, as you can see in the upper right corner, it says Hursty. So we got Dwayne Hurst on the art, we got David Marty on the build, we've got Emulation Station Retro, running off of Emulation Station Retro Pie. Retro Pie, Retro Pie Setup, We are running 4.2.12. So it is just a base image. There are some files I'll show you in just a moment. Go ahead and try this out. All the systems are working good. You do have these little launch screens, so a system um, image every time you launch a certain image. And it looks like you have bezels as well. So PlayStation has a bezel. Supposedly this has been optimized for PlayStation and Nintendo 64. He has all the right settings that he likes it. So that's why you'd be getting this. This is not really a pre-built image per se. It's more like a a uh, custom shell, if you will. Here we go, we're doing it. So as you can see, the PlayStation emulates pretty well on the Raspberry Pi 3. It's definitely playable. Uh, you just can't suck at games. So that is definitely a limiting factor. It was really responsive. Whoa! <laughs> what? It won't stop spinning, wow. That was pretty bad. 360, look how far I am now. Wow. So that was back break. Okay, that's front break. Okay, good enough. Let's try drifting a little bit here. <laughs> the 360 drift. Drew talks 360 drift. 360 get last place drift. You can start select out. There you go, you got Gran Turismo. Um, and then let's give a um, a MAME game a shot. So final burn, you got the launch screen. So he does have some shaders on here as well. As you can see, it's a little... Um, you got some scan lines there. We got Venom. Ready. Fight. 
There we go. There we go. Wrecked. All right. So Marvel vs. Capcom. So there you go. It's uh, Motion Blue version 4, as I mentioned. Let's go ahead and jump on the computer really quick. It is Sega Genesis, not Mega Drive, by the way, as well. Um, let's just jump on the computer really quick. I'll show you what else comes with this download. Um, and we'll, we'll read the, the README as well. So a, a couple of things on this build is, so you can see the image here. By the way, it doesn't really fit on a 32 gigabyte SD card. I had to put it on a 64 gigabyte. So you either need a really high quality 32 that doesn't get much loss in data, or you have to shrink the image, uh, or you gotta go with like a 64 gigabyte. Uh, 64 gigabytes great though, because now you have plenty of room for other stuff. Um, he does have Duncan's arcade pamphlet, which is a quick, um, you know, talking about the project, how it works, how to turn off your, the actual thing and different companies that have helped him with resources. So very cool on that. And then, uh, you have the ultimate arcade guide, which I was mentioning earlier, version one. Um, and I'm going to, you know, respect his privacy and not show you everything, but, um, you know, you get some speaker cutouts, parts, dimensions, artwork, pictures. So if you're thinking about building your own custom cabinet, this might be something worth checking out. I'm sure I'll be happy to share with you um, any of this information. Uh, link doesn't have anything in there. And then read me. Thanks for downloading. Oh, he's got a Facebook group. So there you go. That's a good way to get a hold of him right there. Okay, cool. So now the actual image. Let's go to the config file. Let's open with a WordPad. Let's just see what these overclock settings are at. So he has it at 1300, 500, 500, 500, the overclock at two. This is very standard overclock. I've done this many times and I've told my viewers that this is by far probably the best you could do without worrying about overheating and just, you know, your pie will be fine at these settings. I've had pies at these settings for years and never had an issue. Once you go to 13.5 or you start messing up with the other cores or you go over voltage, that's where you might run into some issues. Uh, but the, the config.txt looks good. So if you are looking for just a pre overclocked image, you know, this might be one that uh, works for you. But the long wait is over and I'm extremely proud to announce the release of the Atom Bomb V1. Before I get into details, I have to give mad props and mad little pixel on ETA Prime for the tutorial masters. David Marty from Motion Blue is deep knowledge and personal attention to questions. Arcade punks for all they do and an honorable mention. What? What? I like an honorable mention and the up-and-coming Harrison hacks. So I guess my, my position in the world is everyone's above me except Harrison hacks. And Harrison hacks Canadian. So I mean, that's just, that's just like, here's all the information on it that he wrote. And as I think I got most of these points in there, see he mentioned he wanted it on a 60 gig. He's got it configured for an N64 PS1. So it's just got some of his own personal things that he likes on it. So maybe if you're new to this, and you want to try something new or you know you just want it kind of preset up in a in kind of a stylistic way uh, it's definitely an option for you um, hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to like subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one after i'm done crying